Riya is a 25-year-old female from the village Kasni. She belongs from a very rich family, owning several hundreds of acres of land through the village. But there's a problem. There has been rumors circulating in the village that there is something deep and dark going on within this family. You see, Riya and some of her siblings never ever come out in the daylight, and if they do come out, they only do so during the middle of the night. When they have to go travel somewhere, they only do it via the night. Nobody is ever allowed to see or meet Riya. And those that occasionally have met her say that her teeth are red, just like blood, and she. She cannot stand in the sunlight. Her skin looks pale, almost bloodless, and she has absolutely no friends. They say some of her fingers are twisted, and some have different lengths. And whenever she does come out at night, there are some unfortunate events that happened across the village that could only be explained by her being out in night. This rumor has recently spread like wildfire in the villages that she is perhaps a witch, or maybe that the entire family is a family of vampires that have lived there since generations, accumulating all that wealth. But today I will tell you what exactly happened to Ria. And how she met with unfortunate circumstances and unfortunate mutations that made people believe that she was the witch of bad omens and the vampire of Kasni. Welcome to Case Files, everyone. I'm Dr. Noj Patel, your host. And in this series, we deep dive into how beautiful and elegant the human body actually is. And I present to you the real and the rare cases that have happened throughout human history. So subscribe if you haven't already, because I promise nobody else will be delivering you content quite like this. Let us start from the start. Ria was the second child born in her family. She had one elder brother and one younger brother. Though the early years of her life were pretty simple, her mother always noticed that Ria would get severely sunburned even if they took her out just to go for a walk. This was also the case with her brothers, though it was much more severe with them. Her mother, not being very well educated and belonging from a rural background, didn't think of this much and instructed all the different maids in her house keep the babies always inside, make them wear full sleeves, clothes, and protect their skin from the sun never to go outside, never to explore the world. Just because if they do, they will get sunburned and it will be bad for them. As the house was extremely large, the children never complained. And in fact, their family would invite many other children into their home just so that these people could make some friends. As far as schooling was considered, Master Ji would come at their home to teach them up till class 10th and 12th just by going to the center once. That is the reality of how wealthy families operate in the rural areas of India. But no matter how much you try to keep a child within the boundaries of their home, they will always have a curiosity to go outside. And that was especially with the case with Ria. She would try to sneak out multiple times during the day whenever the maids weren't paying attention. And every time she would develop some sort of sunburn or some sort of blister in the exposed areas of the skin. As Ria grew older, her mother noticed that her teeth were starting not to become white, not to become yellow, but instead become a little bit pink brownish. And of course, they did not pay much attention to it. Being separated from healthcare does have that impact on you where you try to ignore symptoms as, mu as much as possible till they have reached a critical stage. And that was exactly the case that was happening with this family. In her family history, it was known that every generation there will be one or two children that will have this sort of condition that will have a that will prohibit them from going outside and working in the fields. So it was the responsibility of the elders to keep gathering all the wealth they can. So it was familial disease since many many generations. Some of their grandparents and great great grandparents had scars on their face because of the sunburns and so much excessive hair growth on the face that they almost resembled werewolves. Of course, the people of the village are going to think that something supernatural is happening, as is the case in most places. One day soon after her 28th birthday, Ria was having a fever. A fever that was so severe that no, none of the local remedies worked. Even the local doctor which they called did not have a solution for this fever. They tried the basic medicines they could, but, but they had to take her to a bigger hospital. And the only hospital was roughly one and a half day away from their place. So they started traveling during the night and they finally reached the hospital the next day. When they arrived in the hospital, the doctors noticed that the fever was extremely severe. But not just that, after thorough examination, there were several changes in the body that pointed towards a certain diagnosis. But what was the cause of the fever? They noticed that on the toes of this girl, there were some blisters which had formed in the skin. These blisters had gotten infected and the infection had reached the deeper levels into the bone, a condition we call osteomyelitis. Through course of antibiotics and antipyretics and different medications, they were successfully able to control the osteomyelitis, save the foot of Rhea, as well as save her life. The fever was controlled, but during the course of her stay in that hospital, they did several tests which pointed towards the diagnosis of a certain disease, which would be life-changing for them. And of course, it was a very big shock for the family. Case Files Rhea, a 25-year-old female from the village of Kasni, educated up to caste wealth. She presents to us with the chief complaints of fever since the last two days. The fever was sudden in onset and it was high grade. The fever did not respond to antipyretics given at home. On examination, patient found to have a blister on the right toe that ruptured, causing an infection, leading to osteomyelitis. Further inquiry revealed a history of blistering skin lesions, especially on the photo-exposed areas. 
the patient also noted pink brownish discoloration of the teeth the osteomyelitis has been treated and the fever has been resolved there is positive family history of presence of similar symptoms in grandparents parents and sometimes in siblings and patient has limited access to healthcare in the rural setting on general examination pallor is noted indicating some sort of anemia going inside the patient's body the patient is also thin and fragile indicating a chronic disease that is present in the body other vital signs like blood pressure respiratory rate temperature spo2 all are within normal limits Let me elaborate more about the integumentary system that is the skin. Erythema and bullae formation are noted over the sun exposed areas that is the face, the back, the extensor of the hand. Some blistering lesions are noted and there is hyperpigmentation along with scarring indicating that this process has been going on since a long time. There are also certain areas of hypertrichosis in the body that means excessive local hair growth. The nails have thinning and transverse grooving present. The oral cavity hygiene is maintained but the teeth have yellowish brownish discoloration suggestive of some sort of porphyrin accumulation. The blood reports of the CBC show that the hemoglobin is around 10 grams per deciliter and mild normocytic anemia is present consistent with chronic hemolysis. However, the RBC, WBC and platelets are all within normal limits. The peripheral blood smear is striking with the evidence of polychromasia. That means the presence of immature blood cells, the immature RBC circulating the blood. There is also some nucleated RBCs present, suggestive of increased erythropoiesis as well as bone marrow stress. We ordered a specific investigation called as urine porphyrin levels, and urine uroporphyrogen levels have increased. At the same time, urine corporoporphyrogen levels have also been increased. The liver function tests are within norm. Based on the clinical history, the examination, the lab reports, as well as a very strong family history, we have come to the diagnosis of a disease that we call congenital erythropoietic porphyria, that many people have also called to be the vampire disease. So let me explain to you what exactly. is the difference between a normal individual versus the case that is ria what is the difference between these two individuals why did ria have to suffer this condition whereas some other people don't and the answer my friend lies in mutations so i told you that she is suffering from anemia anemia basically means where your hemoglobin level or your rbc level goes down so why is her hemoglobin level going down how is it related to her photosensitivity and rashes you see the hemoglobin compound is composed of two things heme and globin we don't have to talk about globin right now but this heme compound this is very essential to us if you talk about it using chemistry terms this heme molecules is what we call a porphyrin and our body uses several complicated steps to make this heme molecule one of the steps in synthesizing this heme molecule requires the conversion from hydroxymethyl bilane to uroporphyrogen 3 and the enzyme that is required over here is called as uroporphyrogen 3 synthase now in certain individuals what happens is that the dna which is encoding for this enzyme is mutated and this mutation causes them to have deficiency or defect in this one particular enzyme now since this enzyme is you can already imagine the hydroxy methyl bilane will continue on accumulating and the heme which will be formed will be very very less in quantity now both of these things serve a problem to us if heme is less we get anemia but if hydroxymethyl bilane is increased then that goes on to different pathways creating different sorts of porphyrin which the body does not actually need and these other porphyrins go and accumulate in the skin and whenever there is sun exposure this porphyrins cause severe phototoxicity and dermatitis explaining the photosensitivity of this individual so why does this mutation only run in her family why is it that nobody else gets this mutation so there are two ways any genetic disease can occur you can have a sporadic mutation that means your genes could randomly mutate at chance that is one explanation for it but the other explanation that a lot of genetic disorders follow they follow an inheritance pattern somebody in your family got that sporadic mutation in the first place their gene was completely bad but since they reproduced they transmitted a gene downward in the generation so downstream in the generation the gene keeps on staying inside the family now most of the genetic disorders that we study from a day to day basis and we encounter from a day to day basis are something that we call autosomal recessive autosomal recessive for any recessive disorder you need one copy from each parent that means one copy from your mom one copy from your dad both of the parents if they give you a recessive gene you will have that disease and it's quite rare to see both parents having the effect affected gene still a lot of the people in riya's family do end up having this disease and the reason was very very clear since the family was very wealthy and since the family belonged from a rural place they did not want to share their land with somebody else so they kept on marrying their daughters and sons within the family first cousin the second cousin the sister to a brother and that is what we call as inbreeding now inbreeding brings all the recessive genes of the family together assuming their grandfather had the mutated gene which they which he transmitted to two of the children now the, now these two children had their children of their own and when these two children are married together the recessive genes come together and lead to an autosomal recessive disease being expressed so vividly in one particular family now this disease is called as the vampire disease for one particular reason first of all i do not support naming any disease based on fictional characters that we read plus it might be derogatory to the patient let me just call it congenital erythropoietic porphyria Ex- let me explain to you why it was called as the vampire disease see the vampires that we read in books and see in movies have particular characteristics they are photosensitive if 
you show them light they will probably vaporize so they always come out at night have a tendency to suck blood that's why their mouth will be always full red because it's covered with somebody else's blood next you will see that they are pale as they are presumed to have no blood at all and lastly they, they cannot have certain foods such as garlic or whatever now let me compare to you the manifestation of cp cp to the well known vampires since photosensitivity is such a big factor in these patients they cannot go out in the day so they always prefer to work in night shifts go into office late have a security guard wala job basically anything to avoid the sunlight the red color of the teeth is explained because of the perforations being accumulated and that causing the changes of the color of the teeth In fact it is also said that their urine has different colors ranging from pink to purple to yellow depending upon the severity of the disease because all these are pigments heme is a pigment imparts color to whatever fluid it is mixed in these people have anemia which make them look pale similar to vampires and lastly certain foods are known to exacerbate these diseases so they might stay away from it making the obvious comparison of them to vampires and it is well known that in indian culture if anything bad is happening rural people are very first to point it out to some supernatural cause so let's say somebody somebody has some cattle which got stolen and at the same day poor riya was going out for an evening walk they might associate it to and label her as the witch of the house that brings the bad omen but in fact she is just the consequence of some unfortunate mutations that have accumulated because of consanguineous marriages occurring inside the family as far as treatment for the disease is concerned we don't have a treatment so far the only treatment that we advise to the patient strict restriction to sunlight at any cost wearing sunscreen which were very high in spf to prevent the photo damage taking good care of the blisters which have already happened because these blisters might rupture and cause severe diseases like osteomyelitis which might affect the fingers of the patient and cause them to lose bones and amputations can happen and it could be really bad for people that have severe anemia we might even advise blood transfusions to them but overall we cannot treat it we can only prevent it symptomatically and that my friends was the vampire disease or congenital erythropoietic porphyria i've added links in the description for more knowledge this is a real case i've changed the details and the names of course to prevent sensitive information please do subscribe for more such videos like this one and you can check out the complete case file series by checking out this playlist it's got five more episodes just like this one that you will enjoy it's your varuj and i'll catch you in the next one goodbye